Rugby World Cup warm-up, folks. Ireland, number one side in the world. We haven't seen them for a while. Up against the Italians, who did play a game last week. We are going to go through some squads, some predictions, recent history, and you guys can let us know your thoughts on how this one may be going to go. I still find Andy Farrell probably my favorite coach to listen to in press conference. He's absolutely no nonsense. Like Any talk about this squad not being ready to go, any rust, he's not having a bar of it. He's such a straight shooter. He doesn't make any excuses. It's really refreshing. He'd never do well as a politician, that man. Way too, way too direct. He says these guys have had plenty of time together and they should be ready to go. Um, they should be ready to go partially as well because their record against Italy in recent years is very, very good. I think they've lost it at least since like 2013, which in terms of where the, the Irish team has gone from is, um, you know, it's, it's ancient history really. Um, last five games, they're all Irish wins and a lot of them are pretty convincing. The average score across the last five is 43-13. So, yeah, they tend to be pretty lopsided battles. But, as I said, the Italians are one game ahead of the Irish in preparation, although they are also away from home. So, yeah, maybe they'll be a little bit encouraged by the fact that the last time they played, although it was in Rome, was only a 14-pointer. So, yeah, maybe a little bit closer in the scheme of things. But, yeah, rank 14 Italy... No one's fancying them to do much, but they do have a tough pull, so they're going to have to get used to playing some big old teams, aren't they? Uh, for Ireland, Kilcoin, Herring, and O'Toole, that is your front row, so maybe not what traditionally has been seen as the Irish starting front row, but all guys who have been in the mix under Andy Farrell. And his squad, despite the fact that he has got a few guys getting their first caps, still seems relatively stable for all the teams who are playing their first caps game of the season like i looked at the english squad i looked at the french squad the uh, welsh squad there's debutants all over the shop there's guys who weren't playing the six nations but the irish squad seems relatively stable in the scheme of things like i said uh ian henderson's captain in the second row alongside joe mccarthy so that's a little bit of a uh, a change one having mccarthy there for sure but ryan beard Kalen Doris and Jack Conan. That's a familiar back row, although we used to see him bear in the second row as of the Six Nations, but we know he can play in the back row, and we're not used to seeing Doris in the seven juice. That's usually about to flare. But, I mean, they asked about about um, Kalen Doris playing at seven and what he can bring. And again, Andy Farrell was like, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what number he's got on his back. He's going to play. He's going to bring what he can bring. He's only going to be himself. So, Kalen Doris is going to do... Kaylin Doris things. Uh, Craig Casey and Jack Crowley is an interesting young 19 uh, combo, so it will be uh, a wee bit of pressure on old Jack Crowley to boss the team around the field, but he has looked up to the task in what we've seen from him in 2023. McCloskey and Henshaw is your 12 13. I love watching Stuart McCloskey play, he's just such a big unit. Something about a big 12 who just runs straight at people and wants to knock their blocks off. There is something primarily satisfying about watching that guy play so we'll see how he goes obviously i don't want to see anyone get their blocks knocked off i want everyone to keep their heads in good condition but you know what i mean uh interesting one with jacob stockdale and keith earls that's a little bit of a blast from the past wing duo i mean keith earls has kind of maintained that spot there or thereabouts more of it as a kind of a bench cover player uh, in recent times but um jacob stockdale we haven't seen him play for ireland for a wee while but again, Andy Farrell was just like, he's been training well. It's almost like a clean slate. Um, so yeah, if we can get back to some of that old form that we've seen him in, why not? And then Jimmy O'Brien uh, gets a chance at fullback. So yeah, as I said, it's a, a few changes, um, but also a lot of familiarity about the side as well. Tom Stewart is going to be one of the guys getting his first test cap from the bench. Try scoring machine for Ulster, so congrats to him. Ken Healy and Tyreek Furlong, familiar names there as well, alongside Tyreek Byrne. So, yeah, they, they still have some of the, the big guns um, ready to go from the bench. Kian Prendergast is there. He's, I don't think he played in the Six Nations, so he is one of the kind of re-additions to the squad. Caelan Blade as well. Goodness me, I thought his days in Ireland colours were done, but good to see because he's been playing the house down in the URC. Kieran Frawley gets a kind of much-awaited test debut alongside Kelvin Nash in the 23 jumper as well. So, yeah, man, um, Andy Farrell's expecting these guys to hit the ground running expectations seem very high which is what they should be for the number one side in the world the reigning six nations champions grand slam champions 
they should be high, and he's um, he's not shying away from that. So really, really pleasing. Uh, for the Italians, I didn't manage to catch the press conference, but I do see the uh, the lineup brings in a few big names and also a couple of guys who will be getting their first international camp as well. Fischetti is up from the bench. We all know what he can do in terms of his um, his around the park play and the scrummaging. Really, really uh, good loose head prop alongside Nicotero and Riccioni. Uh, yeah, I think you'd have to be pretty pleased with that if you're an Italian fan. Both of those props, especially, um, are genuinely classy props. So it's one of those kind of fundamental building blocks to a team which is going to be competitive at test level. If you're going to go to Dublin and do anything other than get a hiding, you'll need to prop the scrum well. So I do think those guys can hold their own. Uh, Dino Lamb is going to get his test debut. I've seen him playing in the Premiership, so uh, congratulations to him for getting selected for international level. Federico Ruzza, he played last week. He still captains the side, but he shifts from the back row into lock this week, which is a little bit more familiar for him at international level. Seb Negri comes in at number six, alongside Zuliano and Halafihi, who played last week. Uh, for the backs, Vani and Garbisi are back into the 23, didn't play last week. That's probably Crowley's preferred 19 combo, so they also have a bit of pressure on them to play, <clears throat> as I said, in Dublin. Not an easy task. Menicello switches to 12. Brex comes back in at 13. Monte Iwani scored a try and chewed up some run meters. He's on the left wing. And then Paolo Odogwu, another guy who we've seen tearing it up in the Premiership before, made it into England squad a few times under Eddie Jones, but never managed to get a cap. So being Italy eligible, um, he's probably pretty thankful he didn't get a cap because uh, he now gets a chance in a World Cup year to, to play for his um for his father's country so well done on him and then Tommaso Allen switches from 10 to 15 so man it's a pretty decent Italian squad they've had a few, they've had a few injuries and Padovani is out for the World Cup which is pretty brutal news but um yeah they've got they've got some of their big gun players there but they're still going to be up against it but yeah we'll see how they go uh BG and then this guy Buonfilo is the uh is a debutant prop. I can't say that I remember seeing him play, but I might have. Alongside Ferrari, none of those guys played in the game last week. Nico Canone and Michele Lamaro, those guys are also back alongside Lorenzo Canone. So there's a heap of forwards, just the two backs in terms of Fusco and Pani, who, well, Pani played last week, but Fusco didn't, but he has played international rugby for Italy before. So yeah, they're bringing the extra forward. I guess they're expecting a big battle up front from the Irish. So... Yeah, overall, I mean, it's an Italian squad who are going to go into this as massive underdogs, but they've still got some good players about them. And then with the Irish changing things up a wee bit from normal, I mean, you never know in sports. It seems bloody unlikely, but they're a game behind. Who knows? It'd be nice to see the Italians uh, put in a good shift. What can I say? In the game that they played this year in the Six Nations, it was 34-20, and Italy did manage some decent attacking play against what's usually a pretty stingy Irish defense. Like they had six clean breaks, which is a lot of sides don't get six clean breaks against Ireland. And Ireland did miss a few tackles. Like the Ireland's tackling percentage dropped to, I want to say, 80-something. You know, like 82 maybe? A little bit lower than what we're, we're, we're used to seeing. And Ireland mauled a lot. Ireland did throw a lot of mauls at them. They still scored five tries to two. And I remember that was the youngest squad that Ireland put out in that Six Nations. So they, they varied things up a little bit uh, for Italy and still managed to get a five try to, to, to win. But um, yeah, it was only a 14-pointer in the scheme of things. Not too bad. Um, especially, as I said, when you consider the average score is 43-13 across the last five. So in the scheme of things, not that bad. Uh, Predictions-wise for this game in Dublin with Matthew Raynal as the ref uh, is 23 points. For Ireland, rugby forecast algorithm says 42. Did I get that right? 42 points. They're predicting Ireland to give Italy an absolute walloping. Um, it's on 8 o'clock over there in Ireland, which I think is 7 o'clock in the morning here in New Zealand. So I will definitely be tuning into this one live. If you want to see, because I don't speak any Italian, but I do speak a bit of Chinese. If you want to see that, two cents on tour. Uh, went to a tomb when I was back there in April of a dude who got his head cut off after he uh, played the drums in the nude. It's kind of an interesting story. If you want to check it out, link's up there. But yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts on how this one's going to go. And um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.